Red Dead Redemption 2 is a land of dust, guns, and grit, where moral ambiguity reigns supreme, a world painted in muted tones of grey, where every character is flawed and scared by the choices they've made and the world they've inhabited. In this harsh landscape, we instinctively search for something or somewhat noble, a hero perhaps. But in a world built on the premise of a crumbling society, driven by outlaws and the fading glory of the Wild West, the concept of heroism becomes murky, almost impossible to grasp. Who, you might wonder, rises above the violence and bloodshed to become something more? As we dig deeper into the game's characters and narrative, the painful truth emerges. No one does. Today's question, are there any true heroes in Red Dead Redemption 2? The natural response, after spending countless hours riding alongside Arthur, Dutch, and the gang, is to say yes. Arthur Morgan, by the end of the game, seeks redemption, making significant efforts to atone for his flawed past. This on the surface may seem like heroism. However, when we peel back the layers of Arthur's character, along with the other major figures in the game, it becomes clear that their journeys are not heroic but tragic. The true depth of this answer lies in the way the game carefully constructs its characters, showing that while redemption is sought, it is not synonymous with heroism. The narrative of RDR2 centers on a gang of outlaws constantly on the run, a band of misfits clinging to the fading dream of freedom as the world around them irreversibly changes. The freedom they once experienced at the peak of the Wild West days was coming to an end. Yet, this group is more than just a collection of criminals. They are a family, bound together by Dutch's idealistic vision of a utopia, a world free from the suffocating constraints of civilization, where they can continue to live off the land and by their own rules, far from the tightening grip of government and law. Dutch's dream of escaping society's reach is embodied from the very start of the game to its end. Since the game fled from Blackwater after the botched heist, Dutch repeated promises of one last score to secure their future. However, no score was ever large enough for Dutch's plan to come to fruition, leading to larger heists with more risk and more consequences for the gang. This vision is most distorted when Dutch speaks of escaping to Tahiti, a fantastical plan that grows more absurd and unachievable as the game progresses. Despite the growing fractures in Dutch's leadership and the increasing impracticality of his schemes, and the manipulative, instigative voice of Maka in his ear, the game remained loyal. Why? Simply because they aren't merely evading the law, or even the more civilized world. They are running from the inescapable march of time. This motive of running, both physically and existentially, pervades every aspect of the game. The gang is perpetually on the move, uprooting themselves from camp to camp, desperately trying to maintain their fragile illusion of freedom. However, as the story unfolds, it becomes apparent that they are not just fleeing external forces. They are running from something much deeper, themselves. With that little bit of background knowledge, let's get back to the question at hand. Are there any true heroes in RDR2? Before we dive into the story of our characters individually, it is important to consider the setting of the game. And furthermore, if the setting of the game allows a hero-type character in the first place. The American frontier was a brutal, lawless place. It's a world where survival often requires morally questionable decisions, and where the lines between good and evil are constantly blurred. Even the smallest acts of survival are tainted by violence and exploitation. Take, for instance, the game's repeated attempts to find safety through crime. While rubbing a train or running a moonshine scam might seem like exciting outlaw behavior, the game constantly reminds us of the human cost, whether it's the life of a beloved game member or the guilt the characters have to live with. In such a setting, the idea of a hero is incompatible. No matter how well-intentioned a character might be, they cannot escape the brutality of the world around them. Survival in this world necessitates acts of violence and pragmatism, blurring any hope for true heroism. Arthur Morgan, the game's protagonist, might be the first person we consider when discussing the concept of a hero in RDR2. After all, he is the character we play as, the person whose perspective we inhabit for the vast majority of the story. As players, we naturally empathize with Arthur, especially as he begins his journey toward redemption. Arthur is a man who has committed countless atrocities, from murder to theft to extortion. His loyalty to Dutch and the gang has led him to participate in acts that no hero would condone. For instance, early in the game, Arthur is part of the disastrous assault on the town of Valentine, a mission that leads to a violent shootout with lawmen 
and the deaths of many innocent civilians. Similarly, his participation in the Saint Denis bank heist leads to the deaths of multiple lawmen and the loss of a major member of the gang, Hosea Matthews. Time and again, Arthur follows Dutch's orders, even when it's clear that those orders are leading the gang down a path of destruction. At no point can we claim that these actions are heroic, no matter how we choose to play Arthur as a character. And yet, as Arthur's story progresses, he begins to question his role in the gang and the life he has led. His diagnosis with tuberculosis forces him to confront his own mortality, and in doing so, he starts to seek redemption. He begins helping others, John and his family, the Wapiti tribe, even those outside the gang who are in need. For example, in Chapter 6, Arthur helps Reigns fall and the Wapiti as they struggle against the injustices inflicted upon them by the US government. This is the moment where many players might start to see Arthur as a hero, a man who is trying to right his wrongs before it's too late. But redemption is not the same as heroism. Arthur's self-awareness and his attempts to make amends are admirable, but they do not erase the blood on his hands. No matter how many good deeds Arthur does toward the end of his life, they do not undo the damage he has caused. His redemption is personal, internal, but it does not change the fact that he has been complicit in countless atrocities. As a player, it's easy to view Arthur as a hero, especially if we play him as a high honor character. The more honorable Arthur becomes, the more sympathetic his story is. In his final moments, he tells John Marston to get out, take Jack and Abigail, and go live a good life. These words, combined with Arthur's decision to help John escape, rather than take the money for himself, might feel like a heroic sacrifice. But again, this sacrifice is too little too late. Arthur's redemption is for his own soul, not for the world he has harmed. While Arthur's story is one of the greatest fictional tales ever told, his journey is not a hero's journey. The concept of the hero's journey is a well-established literary framework that has been explored across cultures and throughout time. Coined by Joseph Campbell in his work, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, the hero's journey is an archetypal narrative pattern in which the protagonist embarks on an adventure, faces trials and challenges, undergoes a transformation, and ultimately returns home changed, often bringing some boon or wisdom to their community. This structure has been the backbone of countless myths, stories, and novels, and it continues to shape our understanding of what it means to be a hero. Yet, Red Dead Redemption 2, subverts this traditional arc at nearly every turn. Campbell's hero often achieves a sense of personal triumph or enlightenment, emerging from the trials as a greater individual. However, RDR2 offers a far more cynical and realistic take on the hero's journey. While Arthur Morgan certainly faces trials, experiences growth, and undergoes a transformation, his journey is not one that ends with enlightenment or personal triumph. Instead, Arthur's journey is marked by moral compromise, death, and a bittersweet sense of redemption. Rather than conquering external foes or returning to his community with newfound wisdom, Arthur is worn down by the weight of his own sins, and his transformation comes in the form of his slow realization that he cannot change the world around him, only himself. Arthur does not triumph over his enemies, he succumbs to his fate. His death does not bring about a great change for the better, nor does it save his community or the gang, which continues to splinter and dissolve after his passing. The closest Arthur comes to fulfilling the hero's journey is in his self-realization. In literature, the hero's journey often symbolizes hope and the triumph of good over evil. By subverting this narrative, reflects a darker and more complex reality. Not all journeys end in victory, and not all who seek redemption achieve it. The game's refusal to follow the traditional hero's path makes it a more reflective and thought-provoking exploration of character, and it challenges the player to question the very nature of heroism itself. Then there's Dutch, the enigmatic leader of the gang, the man with a plan. Dutch is the embodiment of a failed dream. As mentioned throughout the game, Dutch preaches the idea of freedom, freedom from the law, from society, from the constraints of civilization. He speaks eloquently about escaping to a new world, where the gang can live in peace and prosperity. In the early parts of the game, Dutch's charisma is undeniable. He draws people in with his vision, convincing them that they are fighting for something bigger than themselves. But Dutch's vision is a lie. His dream is nothing more than a selfish desire for power and control. As the game progresses, Dutch becomes increasingly erratic, leading the gang into one disastrous scheme after another. The heist in Saint Denis is a prime example of this. 
Dutch's response is not one of regret or accountability. Instead, he doubles down, insisting that the next plan will be the one that sets them free. Dutch is not a hero. He is a manipulator. He uses his charisma and his vision to keep the game under his control, even as it becomes clear that he is leading them to their deaths. His speeches about freedom are hollow, masking a deep insecurity and fear of irrelevance. Dutch is not running from the law. He is running from failure, from accountability, and from the inevitable collapse of his world. He cannot face the reality that the Wild West is dead, and rather than evolve, he clings to the past, pulling everyone down with him. His descent into madness is a slow, agonizing process, and by the end of the game, Dutch is nothing more than a broken man, willing to sacrifice anyone and everyone to maintain his delusions of grandeur. In the end, Dutch's story is not one of heroism but of tragedy, a man who believed in a dream but could never face the reality of his own failure. John Marston, the protagonist of the first Red Dead Redemption, is another character some might point to as a hero. Like Arthur, John wants to leave his outlaw life behind. Throughout Red Dead Redemption 2, we see John struggle to balance his desire to provide for his family with the demands of the gang. He wants to be a good father to his son Jack and a good husband to his wife Abigail. But John, like Arthur, is a man who cannot escape what he truly is. Early in the game, John is portrayed as reckless and irresponsible. His decision to leave the gang and his family behind leads to his capture by wolves, and it's only through the intervention of Arthur that he survives. This sets the tone for much of John's arc throughout the game. He is constantly being rescued by others, unable to take full responsibility for his actions. But as the game progresses, John starts to change. He becomes more responsible, more focused on his family. In the epilogue, we see John working on a ranch, trying to build a new life for his wife and son. This is the version of John that many players might see as a hero, a man who is trying to change, to leave his violent past behind. But John's struggle is far from over. Despite his efforts to live a peaceful life, John cannot escape his nature. When the ranch is attacked, John does not hesitate to pick up his gun and defend his home. While this might seem like a noble act, it is also a reminder that John is, at his core, an outlaw. He enjoys the violence, the thrill of being a gunslinger. After the attack on the ranch, John is drawn back into a life of violence, hunting down those who have wronged him. This is not the behavior of a man who has fully changed, but of someone who is constantly at odds with himself. No matter how much John wants to live a peaceful life, the outlaw in him will always be there, lurking just beneath the surface. John's story, like Arthur's, is one of internal conflict. He wants to be a better man, but he is constantly pulled back into the life he has tried so hard to leave behind. This makes John a sympathetic character, but not a hero. His inability to fully escape his nature is a reminder that, in the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, no one can truly rise above their circumstances. John, like Arthur, is a man burdened by his past, and no matter how much he tries to change, he can never fully break free from the life he has led. Even the game's minor characters reflect the complex moral ambiguity that runs throughout Red Dead Redemption 2. Take Sadie Adler, for example. Sadie's story is one of the most compelling side arcs in the game. After losing her husband to a gang of outlaws, Sadie transforms from a grieving widow into a fierce, independent bounty hunter. Many players might see Sadie as a sympathetic character, and she certainly has moments of loyalty and bravery. However, Sadie's transformation is driven by revenge and violence. Her quest for vengeance against those who wronged her is understandable, but it is not heroic. Sadie's actions are fueled by anger, and while she becomes a powerful and capable figure, her violence reflects the same moral compromises that define the rest of the gang. Similarly, Charles Smith is often viewed as one of the more noble characters in the gang. Charles is thoughtful, compassionate, and often a voice of reason within the gang. He cares deeply for the Native American tribes and consistently tries to avoid unnecessary violence. However, even Charles is not untouched by the brutality of the world he inhabits. He participates in many of the gang's violent activities, including the assault on Bronte's mansion and the deadly train robberies. Charles, like everyone else, is caught in moral grayness of the world. His actions, no matter how well-intentioned, are still part of a larger system of violence and corruption. These characters, while sympathetic, are not heroes. They are people shaped by their circumstances, making decisions in a world where moral clarity is impossible. In the end, there are no true heroes in Red Dead Redemption 2, only people, complex, damaged, and desperately trying to find their way in a world that no longer has a place for them.
In this world, heroism doesn't exist. Only survival, redemption, and moral compromise do. And perhaps that's the most poignant thing of all. This is not a story about heroes. It's a story about people trying to survive. And in that survival, perhaps we see a reflection of ourselves, of the choices we make, the regrets we carry, and the hope that somehow we too can find redemption, even if we can never truly become heroes.